In this video, I'm going to take a look at Pixel Luvo, a photo editor available for Linux and Windows. Pixel Luvo is a cool little photo editor that I found uh, one day when I was browsing through Steam, uh, which was an unexpected place to find a, a Linux photography application. But because they sell applications as well as games, um, I did stumble onto this and I was always curious about it. Um, so I finally dived in, I purchased it a little while back and started playing around with it. And it's got a lot of cool, interesting features uh, that make it worth checking out. Um, now, before I look at the basics, I'm just going to go to probably the most compelling feature of this entire application, especially for Linux photographers out there. And if I go down here to the bottom right and just uh, open up the layers panel, you're going to see some regular layers. But what's that at the top? Those are adjustment layers. Oh my god, adjustment layers. Uh, this is something that GIMP users have been pining for for ages. This allows for non-destructive editing, things that you can go back to and make changes. And it's really unfortunate that GIMP doesn't have this feature. I know it is in development, uh, but here it is in Pixeluvo. So a lot of people might want to check out this application just for this feature alone. Uh, so what it really means is um, if I click on here FX, I have a lot of different uh, ways I can adjust my image and they're all done on an adjustment layer. So I'm just going to select levels and I'll just uh, move this dialog box over here and just uh, slide it over to the right a little bit, make the image a little bit brighter, click OK. Now I could move on to even more um, changes, I'll just maybe I'll go on to contrast or something and, and just increase it a little bit or something, click OK. Now all those changes are done non-destructively. But what really makes the difference is I can go back to them. I'm not locked into those particular settings. So if I look at the image and I go, you know what? Maybe I want that even a little bit brighter here in the highlights. I could go that way. I could bring in the darks. I could make any other changes I want. Click OK, and I can still go back to it. If I want to go to a previous step earlier on here in temperature, maybe I want to adjust that a little bit. I can do that as well. Um, so that's fantastic. That's a great feature. And really just the layers in general are fully featured. Um, you can see that there's actually different blend modes here which come up quite often. Um, you can adjust the opacity of any particular layer. And um, oh, as you can see here, the little icon there, you can add layer masks. So really as far as layer goes, it's got you covered. I'm sure right away some people are interested just from adjustment layers alone. Uh, but just looking at the application in general, um, you can see uh, it's really nice. It's very professional looking. It's got a clean, modern user interface. Um, any of the dialog boxes that you interact with, uh, they also look very professional as well, which is fantastic. Um, so going back to something more basic, if you just look at the toolbox over here, um, you have a selection of tools, but it isn't nearly as large as something like GIMP or Photoshop. And I think that's just kind of in general with Pixeluvo is it's a little more streamlined. This isn't like they're throwing in everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, this is more like a selection of really commonly used uh, photography application tools. And just that's about it, which isn't bad at all. I think having a simplified workflow uh, can be very effective. But as you see there, there's a crop tool, there's a move tool, there's a brush tool, you have um, a clone tool, you have spot heal, different selection tools, and so on. So really nothing surprising here from your basic group. Um, they're, they're there, you can get the job done, and it's basically very easy to find your way around this application, assuming you've used Photoshop or GIMP before. I had no problem picking this up and learning my way around, uh, zooming in, zooming out, moving around the image, and so on. Moving on to a second image, um, some of the more, I guess, uh, more advanced features or something that stands out a little more. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in on this image a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll just go one-to-one uh, -one here or something. So I started to play around. I was making some edits here, and uh, I've made a, a separate layer here for the effects brush. Um, so what this allows you to do is it allows you to make certain changes with the brush, and instead of making a layer and then doing a layer mask so you can do selective editing, you can just kind of set your brush with certain presets. So I'm going to come down here into the bottom left and I'll choose saturate and maybe I'll just take a look at what brush I'm using. Maybe we'll go with something a little bit softer there and then you can choose the amount. So uh, for saturation, I guess I could type in a number. I'll type in 15 and then I'll just come up here on the lipstick and I could paint in a, a bit more saturation on the lips. And if I did a quick, here's before, here's after. Um, you have some other tools to work with. Let's say 
let's go to sharpen and I don't know how much I want. Well, okay, let's say about 30. And I'll come to this eye here. It's not quite as sharp as the other eye. I can sharpen that up a little bit. Uh, maybe I want to sharpen up more. Let's go to, let's try the boost detail and just try it at about an eight or so on. But you get the idea. Instead of taking an effect, putting it on a layer, and then using a layer mask to uh, do it selectively, you can do it with that effects brush, uh, which is a pretty cool little feature. Again, there's before, there's after. You can see those changes that I've made. Um, there is a, a option here um, for smooth skin. Now this is one I actually didn't really like that much. It, it just really feels more like a blur skin. And I'm sure maybe um, if you turn down the sensitivity isn't that bad. I don't know, maybe we'll try it at a 40. Um, really I just find it kind of took away detail. Um, there's better options to do this, but I see what they're going for. They just want to give you a simple, easy to use tool. Um, though I, I would avoid this one myself. Um, I'm going to zoom out again. And I'm just going to look at some of the, the presets and effects that are available. There's quite a few. So if you just want to come over here to color, you could do a photo filter. You know, you could choose a warming filter, a cooling filter, and so on. Adjust its strength. Very easy to do and a very simple uh, little dialog box to interact with. Uh, you could pull up some split toning. You could um, play with that, uh, make some adjustments, change the balance, the saturation. All very quick and easy to do. And if you put it on its own layer, you can adjust the opacity afterwards. Um, something that I thought was pretty cool, um, you can go to effects, maybe you can go to filter, vignettes pretty common, lighting. So with this image, maybe I'd try some light leaks and you can keep randomizing it and going until you found something that you liked for the image. And again, you can adjust the opacity and so on. Very cool. Office also built in, they have an option here called quick color. Um, so this would give you kind of, you know, like a bit of an Instagram effect where it looks like it's been cross-processed or split-toned or something or distorted in a certain way. Um, and again, you can adjust the blend, its opacity, and so on. So some really cool kind of um, presets, filters, and effects that are built in. You don't have to install any plugins or anything like that, which I think are very helpful. So up until this point, um, I've just been using JPEGs. But Pixelubo actually, um, its functionality is relatively deep actually, because you can even edit raw photos. Now this is just basic raw photo editing. It's not a full suite like Darktable or Adobe's Lightroom. You can't do batch editing, but you can bring in a raw image and do your basic edits. Um, here I'll just maybe try the audio, auto exposure, see what it does. That's not so great, you know, but I can adjust the tonal values, get something closer to what I want, maybe bring things down around here. Um, of course, you'd have a recovery, which is like your highlights, and you could try to bring back more details in the highlights. Uh, fill light is a bit like shadows, you know, you could increase the shadows and so on. Um, so really, you've got your real uh, nice collection of basic raw editing features here, which is fantastic. Uh, you could make those edits, you can go convert to 8-bit and move on to some JPEG editing. You could even, uh, you could come down here and you could um, start adding adjustment layers um, onto the raw photo, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I could come in, maybe I throw on another one, jump onto some curves or something. Um, very cool. So you can use those adjustment layers on top of your raw photo at the bottom here. But once you start trying to do other things, um, let's say I try to do a, a clone or maybe even a, a spot heel, I guess we'll try. And if I click anywhere, You'll see down here at the bottom, uh, you got to convert that to a bitmap layer before you can make those kind of changes. But either way, uh, fantastic. I really love that it includes some raw photo editing options as well. Some of the things that I don't like about Pixeluvo, um, if I just go back to my first image here, maybe I'll just zoom in a bit. And this isn't a great image to show it off, but I really don't like that they have a clone tool. Okay, that's great. And they have a spot heel tool but they don't just have a regular heal tool. It's either spot heal or clone. Um, so you can actually go back to my video about uh, fixing blemishes in GIMP and I explain the difference between uh, the clone tool and the heal tool. So with the clone, um, you know, you could select a, a part and you're basically copying pixels and pasting them onto another area. But I don't have a, a regular heal tool where I could select an area and then blend the pixels with the, the pixels around it. Basically what it sums up is I'm really not getting the results that I want from the heal tools. And that's disappointing because this is something that I would leave my raw photo editor for to do some proper healing. And I'm really only getting maybe, I don't know, a 60% success rate here in Pixeluvo, which is disappointing. Also, you'll notice, and I haven't found it, maybe it is, but there's no history panel. 
So the only way to go back is to do an undo and keep pushing Control Z and you know, you'll see the undoing back there. Um, there's no history stack, which would be very helpful, particularly because there is quite a bit of functionality in this application. Uh, something that really bothers me as well is if, um, okay, we'll say we'll go to levels. Um, if I want to adjust anything, um, let's say I click and slide this to the right, um, I can't hover my mouse wheel over it and make subtle adjustments. And if I click on the little arrows, like the up and down, they just have a horrible effect. Um, so I find clicking and dragging, I always find that to be a little ham-fisted. It's not as subtle, it's not as precise, and I want to be able to hover with my mouse wheel over. And that goes with any dialogue, any module. It always has to be like a click and drag, and I find that very frustrating. So if I wanted to subtly uh, adjust the balance, I can't. It's got to be click and drag or uh, type in a number, which, which I really don't like. Um, I also find the application a little slow to save, um, and sometimes it's a little slow when I'm s switching in between uh, different tools itself. But nothing too major as far as the nitpicks like that go. To break things down a bit into some pros and cons, uh, for the pros, obviously as I mentioned earlier, adjustment layers, it's a huge deal. Non-destructive editing, this is something you really want, something you really need if you're going to do anything besides some basic adjustments. Again, for me, it's really not as huge of a deal because all those changes that I'd make on adjustment layers, I would do those in a raw photo editor non-destructively. But if you're just editing JPEGs, uh, it's very helpful. Um, I love the streamlined interface. I love that it's not a zillion tools with a bunch of sliders and pop-up menus. Uh, it's very simplified, just a really nice curated selection of frequently used tools. It's easy to learn. Um, I say that with a caveat of if you've used Photoshop or GIMP before, it's easy to learn. If you haven't, maybe it is a little more challenging. I myself had no problem picking this application up and learning how to use it. I love that it supports RAW files. I only tested it with a Canon CR2 file, uh, but apparently it works with um, all RAW uh, photo formats, or at least most of them. I'm not too sure on, on the exact details. Um, it includes those fun, easy to use presets, which I think adds a lot of value. And again, that clean interface is great. Um, this isn't free software. Um, it is for a price. I purchased mine from Steam, where you can get it for sale. Uh, keep in note, if you buy it from Steam, I believe you have to launch the Steam application and the photo editor, which is really stupid because you're using up resources. Uh, but I contacted the developer, and they actually gave me the license code to just use the standalone version. So I've never had to launch Steam at the same time. Uh, but I think there's a lot of value for the price for what you get. When it comes to the cons, the negatives, um, the very first one right away is just it's not open source. Um, for some people it's a big deal, others are more pragmatic, they don't care. Um, for me, I love having a fully open source desktop as possible. Um, it usually isn't, I have to end up installing Adobe Flash and Codex and certain other things. Um, but there's also another downside about using some of the proprietary is it doesn't integrate with your package manager to get updates. Um, and also, if you look at my, my bottom complaint there, there's a small community around this application. I bet if this was open source, you'd have way more people using this application. Um, my other one here, no color management. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Um, some other things, there's no layer groups. That would be great. The selection tools are okay. They're not fantastic. No 16-bit color depth support. And it can't open PSD files. This isn't something I really use myself, um, but GIMP can open PSD files. And for some people, uh, that's an important feature. So the big question remains, would I recommend Pixeluvo? Well, it's got those awesome adjustment layers. I love the modern user interface. It looks very professional. I love that everything stays out of your way so you have room to edit. It's got a nice streamlined selection of tools. And most importantly for me, it runs on Linux. Unfortunately, there's one very big problem. There's no color management. Let me show you what that means. Now the photos that I was editing, I took them a long time ago. I wanted some JPEGs to play around with in Pixeluvo, and I shot these before I was shooting in RAW. Um, these were shot with a camera directly into JPEG with the Adobe, Adobe RGB color profile embedded inside them, not sRGB. So now I'm going to open that exact same image with Pixeluvo, and I just want to put those two side by side so you can kind of see the difference here. So on the left is my color managed image viewer Geeky, and on the right is Pixeluvo. You should notice that the image on the right, it's losing some of the saturation. Um, there's not as much yellow, there's not as much red. And that's because Pixeluvo can't read that color profile. It's not color managed. So if I went to start editing on this, I'd be doing everything wrong. 
Now, the only way I was actually able to edit this photo uh, was to first open it in GIMP, convert it from Adobe RGB into sRGB, and then I could open it up in Pixeluvo and begin editing it properly. So that's a complete and total failure. I need another application to actually get the job done. Um, and that's unfortunate. And I don't know if software developers don't understand or if it's really hard to implement, but if you have an application that views or edit photos, it needs to be color managed. It's almost like a complete waste of my time if it's not, and, and very disappointing that it's not implemented in there. I've seen in a forum post the developer states that in the future they'll add it, and I really hope they do. But at this point, um, I can't recommend it. Um, outside of that, as I mentioned, um, I really had fun with Pixeluvo. I think it's a really cool little application. Um, I love that it's available on Linux. The fact that we're having so many options uh, for photo editors is just fantastic. Um, you can pick it up on Steam. You could pick it up at pixeluvo.com for $34. I think it's a fair price. Unfortunately, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it just based on color management alone. Um, otherwise, though, um, for me, myself, I'm going to stick with GIMP. I love GIMP. Um, I love that it integrates with my package manager. And especially now that uh, the Fedora Design Suite has started putting all the GIMP plugins that I love right inside the GNOME Software Center. So I can just go in there, check a few boxes, and it installs all those great plugins. Anyway, um, definitely worth having a look at Pixeluvo. Um, I know I had fun playing around with it. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button below. If you'd like to learn more, please consider purchasing the open source photography course available at rileybrandt.com lessons. More information about the course and links to all my social media sites can be found in the description below.